Hello, folks. Welcome to the best investment property advice ever with Trevor Henson. Today, we have Mr. Lee Johnson, broker extraordinaire and owner and founder of West Realty Group and the development company here in Los Angeles, if I'm correct. That's correct. Oh, welcome, Lee. Appreciate you coming along, man. Uh, so tell me, tell us a little bit about Lee Johnson and how you got started in the uh, multifamily investment space. I started more through development side, which my whole family's in development out of New York. So I kind of grew up in the building industry side of it. Uh, side. Single family homes mostly. And uh, that was very, I guess, easy for me to understand, easy for me to get a hold of. Uh, when I moved out from New York to Los Angeles in 1998, I went into the brokerage side. So kind of a long story, but went into the brokerage side to really acclimate to the areas and find out where pricing was and you know what trends were, I guess, at the time. And uh, I started more uh, with a development company out here, uh, which was a split off of Braymar Homes, Palisades Development doing single family homes and then mixed use projects. So I did wow. a bunch of them with, with those, with those companies <laughs> and then went out on my own uh, and started raising money and using all that knowledge gained through experience to uh, then start putting my own projects together. Do you want to uh, tell the audience of your latest project uh, coming up? That um, Yeah, you know, just, I actually just have, uh, we have 300 units either in the pipeline or uh, actually wow. completed. Uh, some of them completed as well in Gardena. Uh, that's one area that is new to us, but we really like the area. So we look for areas where up and coming as far as uh, maybe a little bit east of a, a really heavy populated area or a little bit south of a heavy developed area to then take advantage of the fact that there's lack of housing and uh, neighborhoods are expanding. So we're just trying to find that edge to uh, build in before it becomes too expensive. Okay. So in Gardena, uh, a lot of uh, young professionals, probably a good part of the population is maybe early 20s to maybe late 30s. So that's a good target market for us. And that I, I know personally about that. I've been to that project. It's a beautiful project. What's everyone's favorite part of that project? <laughs> well, that, uh, I, I'll tell you, we, we try to design a theme around all the projects where they kind of interact right. with each other. So uh, our tagline is where staying home is as fun as going out. So you can do almost kind of like events or We'll have um, gatherings or promotional things from businesses in the area that they'll come to the building and get everybody, people to interact with each other, get out of their units and, uh, and try to do things together. And th the reason for that, which I found exciting, is there's studies that are done through ULI that if um, people interact or make friends with which I'm sure you have this information as well, being a great property management company, uh, where if they interact with each other and they make friends, they're 75% more likely to stay and renew their lease. So we try to create a, an interactive process with the tenants. And uh, I don't know if anyone, if you lived alone you know, for quite a bit of time, I did before I was married. And the last thing I wanted to do was go home. I was always like, oh, let me call a friend. Let me, because right. I knew as soon as I walked in that door, that was it. Right. Crickets, you know, there was nothing going to happen right. after that. And I was, and I didn't really want to go home and just be kind of reminded of being alone. You know, So <laughs> I, that's what I like about the buildings. It, you'll want to go home. You'll want to interact. You'll know events are going on. You don't have to participate, but you can be part of them if you want. Such a amazing concept. I've seen, in my experience in the in the area, just in lease and doing lease ups and such, I've your building that uh, is in the cocoon sixty three. Yes, um, is um, one of the most unique for the location that I've seen in LA, and I've seen quite a few buildings. It really is the space design and everything you've done there is just different enough to where it makes it a really interesting building. 
and I know you were very much hands on in that, right? That you yeah. had a lot to do with the deal. I see yourself, right? I, yeah. I kind of, I you know, I think a a good thing as far as is that I I think that's what investors like about me is I know what's going on at the buildings. I like to interact with the tenants. I like to hear how they're experiencing living in the building. Uh, believe it or not, it's it's a that slight difference that you, that you could easily put a fire out, but if you didn't even know there was a fire and you don't understand why, you know, and there's this kind of underlying thing happening, which is could be real simple to correct. You know, it's that's I think what investors like that I kind of know what's going on constantly. And, and you have the finger on the pulse of the building along with the. Yes. Uh, it's awesome. It is a very unique approach. I've seen a lot of um, other people, other investors' choice to be, they would like to be silent investors or hand, real hands off and kind of, and just step away, which is okay. But uh, your personality type, just as I've gotten to know you, you want to, you're in there, you want to see what the, the final design looks like, right down to the chairs on the deck, to the umbrellas, to the cool contraption of a parking uh, garage. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that is all I can, I can see your, um, your fingerprints on on the place as I when you walk through it as I got to know you. If I was twenty something, thirty something, and single, I'd be right in that place because it's it's a it's a unique experience. I, think. I appreciate that. Uh, we're we're exactly. trying as hard as we can. And so so then taking us back from this amazing project, all the to the back to the beginning. What was your first deal? Like where you yourself raised money or were like the managing member of? That's a great question. Uh, my my first deal and most, I'd say, significant deal, right? Because I, I could kind of combine those two together uh, was a project. See, I like to let me let me just kind of digress a little bit. I love reading code books for some silly reason. I love reading codes. I love if I have an idea of like, oh, I think that kind of development would be kind of cool. I'll research the, the, the code books in a certain area that I like. And I'll try to see, oh, it doesn't work there. Oh, maybe it works in another city. And I'll start researching code books. And I love reading the fine print. And I don't take things for face value. I've met so many people that say, oh, you can't do that in that on that lot. We've, you know, we looked into it. And then I, I've seen people just say, oh, you can't do it. I'm not even going to bother. And I go, well, let me look, let me look myself. I kind of feel like I need to read that or I need to look at the definition of what you mean by that or. And because cities have different definitions for for the same thing, so it's funny. Uh, but I'd say my my first deal and my most significant deal, which I still own, is an eight unit building in Santa Monica. Uh, eight for years, years it sat vacant a lot, right on Main Street, great part of uh, Santa Monica. That was now it is. I guess it was kind of the deserted side at you know two thousand five <laughs> when I saw it. Right now it's bustling, but. I would say no one could build more than four units there. And that's when I first was introduced to parking, the parking lift systems that we're now using in our buildings now. I put a parking lift system in, so everyone received two parking spaces and I was able to put eight units in instead of four. So now I have a building that was uh, kind of constrained on what you could do and how big and nobody was interested in it and I, built an eight unit building. I wound up living in that building. I built a, huh. a three bedroom townhouse with a thousand square foot rooftop deck overlooking the water. Like you could see the That's water. Awesome. No other, <laughs> no other three story buildings between me and the water. So it was great. And I lived there for 10 years with my wife. Uh, wow. Wow. For 10 years. 50, actually, because all the other tenants paid yeah. for my space there. So I guess that to me would be something that an investor would, you know, would you live there, you know, and, uh, you know, location, location, location is always absolutely. A goal. So you got 10 years of property management experience under your belt as well. <laughs> you know, it's uh, when you, it's different when you're living there because you're kind of choosing people that you can kind of live with as opposed to, right. hey, they fit the bill, you know, and they're perfect, you know, but it's, you know, you kind of, I don't know, I think with any property manager on site, they're going to kind of connect well with people that are like them in a sense, even if it's un unknowingly, you know, they're going to find, uh, they're going to maybe speak the same language, maybe have the same body mannerisms and some tenants going to feel very comfortable with that person. 
and say, well, I, you know, I feel like this guy is going to be a good manager. I think I'll live here. And I think that that's, that's kind of, you know, the jive, you know, that you kind of get or the vibe you get with somebody. So I just think I, with a smaller building, I think I just, you know, I, I was the one showing it. So I just kind of vibed right. with them. I still right. have people here from 2007 when the building was completed. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's, it goes back to your, your very hands on, like so very much so that you live, lived at the building. <laughs> I'm surprised you're not, didn't build a three unit, two bedroom over there at uh, the, the Gardena property. And so you can moonlight over there every now and then. <laughs> I, I'm surprised no one on my door at three in the morning. <laughs> so with that being your most significant deal, you went from eight units. What is your, what is your portfolio like now? Are you, do you buy and hold? Do you sell uh, or are you? you know, that's a, I, I have different, I guess, um, an outlook on things. Ideally, I'd love to buy and hold everything, you know, but, right, with me all, right. you know, as you start to grow and um, I started realizing this more within the last five years, uh, as you start to grow and build bigger projects, you can't do that all with mom and pop or friends and family investors, which, which could allow you to have that long-term outlook because they they have that same long-term outlook you do. When you start dealing with uh, more sophisticated investment firms or family offices, they want they have a timeline. They want out, you know. So it's very hard to maybe keep a building sometimes more than maybe seven years, five years. Sometimes even when it's if it's a ground-up development, they want it sold as soon as it's stabilized, you know. Mm-hmm. They want out. Right. Whether or not you can refinance and or recap with new investors and get rid of them, uh, that's a whole different kind of avenue to go down. But you know, they 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 want that quick money, and uh, that to me is uh, is what we've been working around actually over the last five years. So although I'd love to keep everything, if I can keep one or two out of five, you know, that would be great. Okay you know okay some very good insight i mean i didn't know that there is the difference between patient money and and investor money <laughs> yeah, if you're right? building smaller stuff you can keep it easier because you could have less investors less, true, yeah. you know maybe people that want to leave it to their family or you know they have you know exactly investment money ira money they want to invest we tend to uh, friends and family wise, believe it or not, we tend to attract a lot of other real estate people like ourselves. Like I grew really? up, in, I was more in brokerage, right? I sh- and I grew up in more development. And from the brokerage community, I made tons of friends. A lot of my investors are actually real estate brokers. And okay. uh, they end up I didn't know that. Not, 70, I think the statistics are 78% of real estate agents do not own anything more than their house if they even own their house. So they're in real estate. They find all this great property for everyone else and they don't invest themselves. Wow. I had a mentor once that said, they only go with the, uh, when, it, when it comes to investing, only go with the guy who has money in it himself as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was like when it came to investing on anything, like, right? Or, or has, or owns, like if you're buying stock, does a stockbroker own stock somewhere? Right, if you're you know, that's, that's the funny thing I always found in, in the difference between investing in the stock market and investing in real estate. Investing in real estate, they want to know so much about you. They want to know so true. how many projects you've done, how, you know, how, how much money do you have in the deal. But if, if you're investing in stocks, you're just putting money in. You don't know who's running the company. A lot of people don't. They just, oh, I hear... Oh. I hear this company's good. It's making a good return. And more than likely it's, it is true. It is a good manager of the, of the portfolio, but nobody looks really deep into it, which I always found funny. Right. Yeah. Uh, it, the old real estate versus stock debate rages on. Anytime I find a stockbroker, I'm like, all right, well, <laughs> if you can't touch it, what happens to it? Right. <laughs> I, I real estate. One, one thing that I, um, strongly believe is good advice as far as investing or buying in real estate. If you're going to do something yourself or even developing, uh, 
a mentor of mine told me, because, you know, when you start hearing about different areas and different, or even out of state, I hear people, oh, I'm, I heard about this state and that state. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes you, you have to speak to somebody who's been doing it so much longer than you, that kind of grounds you, you know? And he said to me, Lee, I've been doing, um, he's 80, he's 80, two now he goes i've been doing this my whole life he goes never build anything that's more than an hour away because you're gonna have to drive there a lot and never invest in anything more than two hours away if you're not building it because if you wow. need to get there but and you know i guess when he was younger you could drive actually an hour now sometimes it takes us an hour just to get across <laughs> town you know? just to get but it's, I, I really believe that. I think, you know, you need to be able to check on it, touch it, make sure it's doing well. And so I, I, do, I do follow that rule a lot. That's a great rule. I've heard that. And that is a, um, if for, for all our listeners out there, if you didn't catch what Lee was talking about, the, the synopsis of it, it sounds like, Lee, correct me if I'm wrong, it's like only buy within your circle of influence where you could drive to right like buy, you want investment if you're buying an investment property or investing in investment property you want to be someplace you can get to easily one way or another not you don't, you don't want to get on an airplane is what i've always is the term i've always heard and it's much easier to raise money that way too because you're you're mm -hmm. dealing with people that oh i know gardena you know oh i know spacex is right next door spacex and, that's right <laughs> no different areas right and they, they drive there and maybe they go there for a weekend or something. So it, it makes it easier also to raise money, even though, you know, raising money is always a challenge. With that in mind, what is your best ever <laughs> advice to someone who want, would like, who's looking to get into specifically multifamily investing? Like either they want to syndicate their first deal or they would like to be invest in their first deal. What, what, what would be the one piece of advice? The location one's fantastic, but the uh, what, what would you, Lee Johnson, give to uh, aspiring developers slash brokers? Make it manageable. Do not- Make it manageable. Yeah, do not overshoot how much money you would need to raise. Meaning, don't go for such a big project right out of the gate. Go for something that is manageable. You know, if you want to do commercial real estate, four or five units or more, right? Or more, mm -hmm. you know, that side of it. It's a whole different loan process than one to four units. So really familiarize yourself with the amount of money you're going to need to raise and try not to be guided by everyone thinks it's as great a deal as you think it is, you know, like, because <laughs> that's not always the case, you know? So I would say, it's true. <laughs> I would say, you know, Failures, if you ask me, like, what is like, what's one of my failures, right? Or almost failures is overshooting, right? Maybe oh, okay. trying to build something that is a great project, but loans change. Now, all of a sudden, instead of, you know, 6% down, it's 40% down, you know? So you really need to be in touch with mm -hmm. the financing side of it and the construction cost side of it. Okay. Never overshoot. Okay. Start small. And then you mentioned something in there. So with real estate, there's obviously there's always a risk with anything, right? What would be one of the biggest challenges or roadblocks that you faced in your career that you had to overcome? Uh, we I all get into this feeling say, like we wonder, you know, hey, it's all going to be sales and this, and we're going to do all this, make all this money. But there's actually quite a bit of you know, things that you have to go up against and run up against. Is there a particular I, one on your side? I think it would probably be one of the biggest roadblocks? That's a very good question. I, I mean, there's different roadblocks in life, right? Like moving out here from New York, the fact that I even grew up out here, that was a big, mm. you know, having to start over and wow. making new connections, you know, that, that was a big business challenge. But, you know, when you're young, you know, you know, oh, everybody loved me, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's, that's fine, and, you know, at the time, but, uh, you know, it takes a lot longer. I probably, it probably took me 10 more years than it would have if I stayed in New York. I see. So I would say that's probably one of the bigger roadblocks that I ran Absolutely. into having to start over again. But it's, but look, I love it in California. I'd never move anywhere else. And, you know, unless Same. we have to get rid of stoves and gas stove. Because <laughs> the gas price. And development costs <laughs> are impossible, you know. <laughs> Go 
we'll move it into the uh, the last bit of our, our show here. It's a, a real fast real estate roundup, aka okay. the lightning round. I'm just I'm going to ask I'm questions one after another, <laughs> and you answer as much or as little as you want, and we'll move on to the next one. And then we okay. are done. So. All right. Question one. What is the best business book you've ever read? I kind of went through different books, I guess, so many of them. But I think the one that really popped out at me, uh, E-Myth Revisited. I really E-Myth liked Revisited. that book. It was all about how to run a business and, you know, myths of, you know, success or failure, right? And I kind of, I really liked that book a lot. And then I would say one of my first investment books was when I was 12 years old, believe it or not. It was Carlton Sheets. It was an infomercial that used to be on television about how to buy real estate with no money down. And no uh, I ordered it myself. I saved up money and my parents were like, what, what is, who ordered this? You know, and I was like, oh, that's mine. <laughs> and I still, uh, that's I still fantastic. have stuff on that. I look back on it. So it's funny. That is awesome. Do you still have the book? <laughs> I do. Actually, what's your craziest real estate story that you could talk about on the air? Of course, <laughs> uh, craziest real estate story was uh, I did a condo conversion project and I was evicting 18 tenants in an 18 unit building. And um, Channel 2 News showed up. Oh, no, and they raised wow. this satellite dish in front of the building, and I thought I was gonna have a stroke. And they wanted to talk to the evil developer. Oh, no. It's kicking everyone out, but it was, it was, yeah, it was, uh, that was probably one of the craziest where I was completely caught off guard. Yeah. I can feel, I can just feel that one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was, it worked That's out it. fine. They, right. You know, I, it's more like a process than it was a, mm-hmm. you know, I think people thought, oh, if I, this guy is throwing us out unnecessarily or doing something illegal. And it was all mm-hmm. above board and they received relocation money and all that. And then they, they actually were fine at the end, but it was, uh, that was probably my craziest, scary. Wow. wow yeah. Envision that. <laughs> if you had 24 hours of time all to yourself to do nothing, but whatever you wanted to do, Lee, what would it be? It's a day. Spa day, spa day, spa day, wine after spa, and then you know, I guess go to a hotel room by myself and shut and watch television. That's it. Silence is, is quiet. Silence. <laughs> What's the best gift you've ever received? Best gift I ever received have to be my two kids. I love them to death. They're they're. They, they just love me. I love them back. I mean, that's the best thing I could ever ask for, you know? It makes, you, uh, makes life worthwhile. She'll My life too. Change obviously. your life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the one. What is your, do you have a favorite, a favorite failure? We were speaking about failures earlier, but do you have a favorite failure? Like what's the one you learned the most from? That was actually oh, a failure. I, I would probably say that's a, that's a great, question, what's your favorite failure or what did I learn the most? I think every deal, I would say there's challenging things that happen, whether it's going to a, a, you know, being booted up to city council and having to Mm -hmm. fight for a project to be approved, um, having to deal with community input and making sure that the community gets the answers they want so the project can move forward. Then there's always development challenges. So I think there's always maneuvering you have to do. And I think it's it's very stressful process from start to finish. And um, I would probably say failures typically aren't really failures. They're just Mm -hmm. kind of hurdles, you know, in my opinion. Uh, Hurdles, got it. Okay. And last question. In the last five years, or maybe eight since we're talking, in eights it seems like, what new belief or like daily habit or behavior has most improved your productivity or your life? Is there, is there one thing that you started or stopped that that's improved the most? Uh, you know, I, I like to learn things. I, I would say I really enjoy self-help things. I like okay. to research things about, you know, how, why I do things a certain way sometimes, or, 
What like can I personality test? Habits, you know, habits, I think sure. are, I don't really have, I have habits. I'm sure my wife will tell you I have tons of habits, you know, but I don't <laughs> think I, I think I'm perfect. You know? <laughs> they just modus operandi for you. <laughs> <laughs> but I would say my, one of my, what I think a good habit of mine is I'm very organized as far as like with my, with um, mm. like, waking up in the morning and knowing I have to go do this and knowing I have to be somewhere, I guess that's structure I, I enjoy. Being intentional with your time, like knowing, yes. knowing where your time's going, right? But I do waste time un- unnecessarily sometimes. And then I get kind of mad at myself, but I go back on tracks. So All right. Fine. Well, that brings us to the close of our uh, show. Lee's or any uh, parting shots, but parting advice yeah. you'd like to give to the, uh, I think there's one question that I didn't answer or I'd like to talk about, and that's why I chose Beachfront Property Management. And I chose Beachfront Property Management as a property management company because I like the fact that I can pick up a phone because I am hands-on. I found it very hard throughout the years to find someone that I, I guess that I, that I couldn't do better than. Does that make sense? Or Mm-hmm. I, I'm right, like, no, oh my gosh, I'm like, why, why isn't this being done? Why is it not being done? Oh gosh. You know, I have to be more involved now, mm-hmm. you know, and I have to be here for this and be here for that. So I, I, I actually liked, I like the interaction with beachfront property management. And I don't feel like I have to be as worried, you know, about what's going on at the building, who's involved. I like the chain of command that you have. And, uh, you know, it makes me feel more comfortable. Plus, when I talk to the investors and I tell, tell them how it's all going and how the interaction is, and I went to the building and I saw for myself, I liked what was going on, you know, it makes everybody feel more comfortable. So I just like your procedures. I like your process. And, uh, and I think you have a lot of competent people there. Thank you. Leah. I really do appreciate that. We, we do try hard to do exactly what you're saying because it's um, on our side, it's the, the client comes first, always one of our core values, right? We want to make sure that we're doing everything we can to make your life easier, right? I mean, that's our tagline, <laughs> making life better through property management. How? Well, making that's life better for tenants and for our owners. All right, folks. Thank you, Lee Johnson. And uh, we'll be in touch. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye.